Okay, and this uh, part of the guide sheet, number one, we're going to be looking at the acceleration and how that works with circular motion. Uh, again, good review for the midterm, the concept of acceleration. Uh, accelerating objects are uh, changing their velocity. Now, they may, because velocity is a vector, it has both uh, size, its speed, and direction, they may be speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction. So in your car, you have the steering wheel, which is the one that most people would not think of as an accelerator, that allows you to change direction. You have the gas pedal, which allows you to speed up, and you have the brake, which allows you to slow down. Okay, so accelerating things are not necessarily going very fast. They're um, not necessarily speeding up or slowing down. They just have to be doing one of speed up, slow down, or change direction. They could be speeding up and changing direction. They could be slowing down and changing direction. But they have to be doing at least one of those things. Now, in circular motion, a good picture down here uh, of an object that's moving clockwise around the circle. <coughs> um, a car that's moving in a circle at a constant speed of 30 miles per hour. Now, at first, you would say, well, it's a constant speed, so therefore it's not accelerating. But again, to make it turn the circle, you have to turn the steering wheel. So you have to change the direction of the object. So therefore, it is uh, accelerating because it is changing its velocity. In this part, in case, the change of velocity is not due to the speed, but due to the change of direction. Now, <clears throat> object moving in a circle, constant speed is a velocity vector that is directed. And again, from our first work, the velocity vector is always directed tangent to the circle. And then the acceleration vector is always going to be 90 degrees to that and is going to point in the same direction as the centripetal force, centripetal, toward the center. So the velocity is tangent to the circle, and the um, velo acceleration vector is uh, inwards toward the center of the circle. So the answer here would be C. Okay, in five, an object moves in a clockwise direction along a circular path as shown. Uh, we have three different points labeled. For each location, we're going to draw the uh, velocity vector, and then we're going to also draw the acceleration vectors. Now, I'm going to draw the velocity vectors in uh, red. Now, we're moving clockwise, so tangent to the circle clockwise here, tangent to the circle clockwise here, tangent to the circle clockwise here. Now all the length of all three of those arrows should be the same because we are talking about velocities and the magnitude of the velocity, which would be the speed, is going to be the same. <clears throat> now if we go for the accelerations, we're going to be looking at uh, we'll go with blue. Let's go to vector. Okay, and we'll change it to blue. And that's going to be toward the center of the circle, and toward the center of the circle, and toward the center of the circle. And you can draw that last one very well. They should be, therefore, 90 degrees to each other. And the acceleration vectors are also going to be the same length. The size of the acceleration is not changing, but it's pointing toward the center of the circle. So again, the word for center seeking or toward the center is centripetal. And so the acceleration is centripetal. Centripetal acceleration toward the center. Again, the velocities are tangential, so tangential, which means tangent or touching the circle at only one point. Okay. okay, and finally we'll look at the conditions that are required to definitely have a large acceleration. Now, to have a large acceleration, uh, we have to be changing our direction uh, at a quick pace, rapidly. So the one piece here that will actually definitely for sure work is turning at a rapid rate. Now we could be moving very fast, but if we're moving very fast on a really large circle, then the acceleration is not that big. Uh, we could be moving along a sharp turn, a very small circle, but if we do that very slowly at a slow speed, 
Our acceleration is not that big. But if we have a, cha a rapid change of direction, then that would indicate a large acceleration. So <clears throat> the one thing that will definitely give us a large acceleration is turning at a rapid rate. Moving very fast around a circle might give us a large acceleration. Moving on a sharp turn might give us a large acceleration, but only if other factors are in our favor. A uh, little interesting fact there at the bottom, uh, the, again, example of where uh, moving very fast does not really give you a large acceleration. The moon is moving at just over uh, a thousand meters per second. That's uh, pretty quick, uh, yet its acceleration is 0 0.003 meters per second squared. So even though it has a very high speed, it has a low acceleration because the radius of its uh, circle is about 250,000 miles. Uh, so <clears throat> very, very low acceleration. Okay. So that gives you some idea about how acceleration ties into circular motion. Again, we are uh, concentrating on uniform circular motion. That means our objects will move with constant speed and have acceleration, because not because they're speeding up or slowing down, but because they are changing their direction.